love. Loveline is meant for an adult audience. For an adult audience. Loveline may contain sexually oriented content. With sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Listener discretion is advised. Listener discretion is advised. This is Loveline. 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 With Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board-certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Carrie Ellis here tonight. Sort of did that right. You did it. <laughs> Lee Wannell. Wait. Lee Wannell. Uh, almost. Wannell. Wannell? No, not Wannell. <laughs> And one L. It is. It's. it's oh, you do. You do hit the. L. Yeah. How I would say it is. There's only one L in Lee. Right. Wait. <laughs> All right. Say. Let me hear you oh, say your last L. name. One L. One L. Oh, there's only one L. That's it. One L. Lee. One L. Yeah. Hi. I'm gonna go ahead. Yeah. Just write one L down there. Yeah. All right. That's what I'm gonna do. Fantabulous. I don't know why I bother writing because I can't read. Uh. It's, it's really fine. Like buying a, going out and spelled like that. Buying, <laughs> buying a set of tires when you don't have a car. You could just put a, an L down there. That's a half you. price education. It was like we can teach you to either read or write. Pick. Yeah. And you, oh. you chose reading. I you chose I, writing. Actually. I chose ceramics class. <laughs> uh, Lee is. Uh, it, from Australia, by the way, and uh, Carrie, of course, is from uh, England. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. Uh, the movie Saw, by the way, S A W, like uh, Saw, Saw and Bones, Chainsaw, it, and uh, it's coming out uh, this Friday, and uh, it seems scary. That's I'm prepared cool. to be scared. And Lee, you co-wrote it, right? And starred um, it as well. I, I, I uh, share the story credit with James Wan, who directed the film, a good friend of mine, also from Australia, and but I actually wrote the screenplay all by my lonesome, oh. which is good for an actor. Yeah. 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 Well, maybe you're a horrible actor. We'll have to find out. <laughs> You've seen the film? Uh, <laughs> if you're good in it, then it'll be good. But if we notice that you're bad, because yeah. I got to say, when I, I, I love... He wrote the best dialogue for himself, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I saw, uh, you know, one of my favorite movies is Cult Fiction. Oh, yeah. And, and Pulp Fiction, yeah. sorry. <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> there we go. Pulp Fiction. And uh, we saw it in a screening before it ever came out, and wow. we had no idea who anybody was. And uh, we saw the movie, and uh, me and Jimmy saw the movie and said, wow, that was a great movie, except for that one guy was a bad actor. And uh, the one guy was the uh, guy who wrote it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Other than that, uh -oh. it was like everyone was fantastic, except for that one guy. I wonder <laughs> how he got it. Well, you know. Yeah. But no, that's not that's not what's going to happen with Saw. That's what I'm saying. No, no, this I, guy did I, a great, I, I, great writing job on the on the script. All right, well, give us the uh, give us the uh, thumbnail uh, sketch of uh, the uh, movie. The pitch. Yeah, give us the pitch. <laughs> Two strangers awaken mm -hmm. in a in a dark room. Essentially, uh, mm -hmm. they can't see anything, which is always scary. Uh, they manage to turn on the lights, and uh, I, uh, my character Adam finds myself staring at Carrie's character, uh, Doctor Gordon, and we're Two men who are chained up at opposite ends of this kind of grimy industrial bathroom. You don't know why you're there? We don't know Nobody why know we're why there. You're. Don't know how we got there. And uh, it all sort of goes from you there. Do you know who you are? And things? We start to, yeah, we start to figure out that we've been put there by a serial killer who calls himself Jigsaw, who basically oh. just wants to torture us. Right. And uh, it's Why a, don't you remember how you got there and all that? He it's drugged us. The drugs. Uh, yeah. we've, we've woken up in this room and, in fact... He, his whole sort of modus operandi is to put people into these situations and, and force them to play a game, force them to choose to either hurt themselves or hurt someone else to stay alive. In this particular case, Carrie's character has to kill my character. Yeah, mm. yeah, it's a very, uh, very suspenseful film and uh, very taut. And you, you break out of the uh, dungeon. I can't tell you. You have to see it. There's a very surprise ending. You gotta see it. It's a very, very seriously uh, dark psychological thriller. I mean, very, very graphic. Well, that's so. it. I'm seeing it. <laughs> Except for I'm not going to theaters because I think I might have something here. Or is this a DVD? Is no, this a DVD? A CD? That's oh, a CD. for Christ's sake! <laughs> you thought it was a bootleg copy from Bali? <laughs> you were mistaken. Oh man, I got all excited. This is it. So there's a soundtrack that uh, in companies. There is. Companies we were it. lucky enough to have Mr. Charlie Clauser, who is uh, one fifth, one sixth uh, of Nine Inch Nails. Wow. And he uh, did the music. Uh, that's the thing that's great about L.A. We said to the producers, we want kind of a Nine Inch Nails-y type sound. And they said, well, why not get the guy from Nine Inch Nails? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what they do yeah, when we, uh, they cast people. They go, we want a Dr. Drew type. And then uh, Dr. Drew says, uh, what about me? And they say, no. Way. No. <laughs> no. Are you high? Are you high? <laughs> 
<laughs> all right. Uh, all right. So the movie is coming out uh, this Friday. Right. The uh, Red Sox have finally won. So uh, everyone, please shut the F up about it. Please, <laughs> with your Sox. I've had such an ass full of you Sox fans. Look at this. Enough sure Boston, already. Going to Boston right back there. Right. Oh, please. Please, do something. <laughs> I, you know what? And I predict a huge emotional letdown for the uh, city of Boston. I, people don't realize what it's like. It gives them something something to do. It right. really does. Yeah. It really gives them it, 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 it gives them something to think about, something to <laughs> get up in the, the morning. Is that the sound of burning? Going? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's wood burning. We, we need more car metal Riots upholstery. In the streets. <laughs> yeah. That's where the BBC reporter comes in and goes, right. burning, looting, the streets of Boston overrun <laughs> by rioters. <laughs> Once again, the fruit of peace has become the jam of war. <laughs> I'm Azim Akram, BBC News, as Boston burns. <laughs> Sorry. I love that. <laughs> awesome. Some dead on. Wow. That <laughs> is <laughs> awesome. We'll yeah. get later on in the show, Kerry, we'll be bringing on some guests, some friend of his, maybe Michael Caine will come on. Oh. oh. It's later in the show. You're going to have to stay wow. with us. Carrie, you do a Michael Caine. I'm, I'm known to, to do Michael Caine. <laughs> awesome. Uh, from, yet, from, though, from time to time. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a guy who's been in like uh, 750 movies. Oh, yeah. Well, didn't you have your story about yeah. him, the way he accepts One his time, roles? One uh, time his agent called him and said, uh, hey, Michael, I have a script for you. And Michael said, uh, oh, yeah, what's it about? And the agent said, well, it's about a million dollars. And Michael went, right, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, finally we got somebody on this show that's got a little life in him, Drew. Hey. Normally, don't, lose it. Uh, don't worry, don't worry. We, we got the, uh, like, we'll normally, let me tell you what the show is. Normally it's like the bass player from Slipknot. It's like, uh, hey, 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 yeah, talking to the mic. Over here, hey, over here. Drew, administer CPR or go get the crash card or something. I think his heart stopped again. Finally, we got some. Oh, we got the BBC reporter. We got Straight. Michael, Michael Caine. Caine in the studio. It's awesome. <laughs> Actually, can you get Michael Caine on the show? <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's move forward here, Drew. You ready? Yeah. All right. So, uh, calls come in. You jump in. You say whatever you want. Sessie. Yes. What's up? You're uh, 23. Okay. What's up, guys? I just want to say hello. Um, right. Anyway. Hi. Hi. Um. Okay, I have a question regarding my boyfriend um, and his testicle. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you kind of inspect your significant other's body when you're just laying there naked. And I started noticing... That stops at a certain point, too. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? Yeah, that stops after a while. Oh, yeah, well, it's still interesting to me. No, I mean, true. You, you, your wife walked past you, you have a woodpecker on your head. <laughs> you're going at your brain, she just keep walking. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> No probably idea. put something down so it didn't mess up the sheets. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get any blood or fecal matter on the sheets and then just keep walking. All right. All right. What's the question? So I noticed that one of them, one of his testicles was a little bit larger than the other. Um, that wasn't the only thing. It was, it had like, like it was a little lumpy on one side, like his left testicle is a little lumpy. Yeah, those are usually varicoseals or cysticeals. Those aren't anything to worry about. If it's They're not. not. It He's not. Down. As long as it's not rock hard, if it's smooth and rubbery, you're fine. But if it's something well, like a very irregular surface, like a pebble, then you ought to have that looked into. Yeah, it's just it looks like almost like cellulite growing on. How would you see cellulite on a, on a scrotum? Mm -hmm. <laughs> is the scrotum. <laughs> I, I don't know. And by the way, he, is he leaning to one side? <clears throat> yeah, bigger. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's often it's common for them to be bigger, on a different angle, lower than the other. And it's even common for there to be these cysts inside, these varicose seals or cystic seals. But, again, if they're smooth and rubbery, relax. Yeah. So what? It would, it would feel... It feels smooth. Pebbly? Pebbly. It feels feel the difference between, like, you know, a surface like this and something that's like a rock, like a pebble. 20 years in radio, you a, still a do that a this? Of a you still do this? <laughs> the, 20 years in radio, he still does, like, hand signals <laughs> and shows pictures and has a dry erase board and stuff. This, you actually say this. I said this. He said this, mm -hmm. and would anyone like to call? Hey, someone call in and guess what this is. That'd be an interesting <laughs> game. New game. What do you think this is? Perfect. Yeah. I, I, they're never going to guess what you touch. Okay. All right. Someone we'll take, more we'll important, take. I think, is the is the ball inspection technique. How do you do that? More drum? damage could be done mm. during the technique yeah, during, if it's not the, done during the inspection yeah. if it's not. 
Well, that's that's why. It's done with a hammer. No, what do you do? <laughs> How do you do it, Drew? Just, How do you do it? You just you, my you, flashlight you, technique. You, not if it's you a bevel. Don't luminous. hit it with a hammer. For yeah. goodness it's, it's, sake, it's, it's, it's a goes. squeezing. It's a. And it's what are you trying to? What are you trying, trying to, to feel? You guess the smooth. You feel the epididymis. You feel the smooth, not too the hard. The test. Not too hard. Spermatic cord. How often should a guy do that? Once a year. Once a year? Mm. Oh, so. <laughs> Once a year. So I'm overcompensating. Every time I take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, look, you're allowed to, uh, you're, you're allowed to like, lather yourself up with soap and do that kind of stuff. That's all <laughs> that, right. That's called <laughs> masturbation, though. Oh, okay. Nick? Yeah. 22? Yep. Your girlfriend took the morning after pill. Yes. Then had uh, sex, uh, what? Two days later? Two days later? Uh, let me tell you the whole story. Okay. Uh, we had sex uh, Friday with condom. It broke, so we went to get the morning after pill. It's two pills, I come to find out. Uh, she well, took some... one pill, Go ahead. and then on yeah. Saturday evening, we ended up having unprotected sex, and then she took the other pill. Why didn't you take it? Wait, wait, wait. When did you take the first one? Saturday morning? Uh, Saturday sometime during the day. I see. And then she took the second one in the evening. All right. Yeah. And between the two, yeah. we had unprotected sex. Right. I was wondering if that decreases the chances, or if that increases the chance of her getting pregnant. And I was wondering what the, what's supposed to be happening is, it, uh, she read the thing on the website, and it said she was supposed to get her period or something within a couple of days. Not necessarily. But Not it will screw up her period for a few months. But so, I, mean, I think she should be fine. Look, you, she, it's not, there's nothing more you can do. Let's put it that so way. So you take you take yeah, you take true. one you take one pill one day and, and then twelve one, hour, twelve hours later you take the second dose. And you had you, yes. you saw fit to have unprotected sex in between. But by the way, that's what you do when you're 22, right? right? I know, I know. So you had Genius. unprotected sex. You couldn't 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 have made it a day with just a BJ, huh? <laughs> <laughs> couldn't have made it one day for condom, not one day. I know, I was dumb. Yeah, yeah. all right, yeah. all right, fair enough. And and when you and let me just ask you something, Nick, because I, I really have this theory that people start with the best of intentions, which is we're just going to screw around a little bit here, but no unprotected sex. But then once the uh, ball gets rolling, so, so to speak, speak. Uh, it's it's hard to stop, right? You have hit the nail right on the head, sir. Right. You're like, look, just uh, a little <laughs> heavy petting, uh, maybe a little uh, third base action, but that's where it ends. And then somewhere and like that chainsaw just gets ripped in you. <laughs> now, that's when the old classic, I'll pull out before it happens. Right, yeah. That's that oh, old chestnut. That, yeah, that, that, that old chestnut. Yeah, it's usually, it's with our listeners, our callers, it's like this. Don't worry, baby, I'm going to pull out before it happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, I got to eat. What's going on? Clean up. I'm going to go do a pose down in the bathroom. <laughs> in the country where you guys come from. Uh, well, more, they're different ones. I know. Emergency contraception. Postcoital contraception. Yes. They have yeah. no problem. Oh, yeah, sure. Over the counter. Oh, no yeah. big deal. Uh, yeah. Commonly yeah. used. Oh, yeah. No big deal. Adam, yeah. I rest my case. I know. What's I rest the deal here? Case. What's the problem? Oh, I, what no, what no is, problem. The problem is the problem? What is the problem? What is the Don't problem? Don't get Drew fired up. Okay. But it, we, yes, we're angered at it. it, it this country is such a paradox, you know? I mean, uh, we're, we're the, we're, we lead the world in uh, pornography and uh, high cholesterol food and all, all kinds of great things that make this country... I believe <laughs> Norway is giving you a good run for your money. Oh, when pornography? It comes to porn, yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, i got to get there? out there. <laughs> Change my travel plan. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. But Norway's great, but I mean, we, we, we burn... We have SUVs that get like uh, zero miles to the gallon. I've actually just... Uh, Actually, uh, runoff pornography. Ooh, that'd be good. An <laughs> SUV that ran off pornography. The point is, is... Uh, what we don't, what, what we aren't very progressive in, in is, is uh, this morning after pill, and, and we claim to hate abortion. Right. Oh, we got to stop abortion. Right. But the same loudmouths that are against abortion are against this pill, which leads me to believe that they're not actually against abortion. They're just sort of pro blowing their trap off. Right. <laughs> really, they they're pro <laughs> blow hard. They're pro letter writing. They're, they're pro Bible. Everything. And yeah. they can't stand the idea that people are getting laid and not being punished for it because yeah. they didn't get laid in high school. They didn't get laid in college. If if they do have any college under their belt, and now they're angry that the beautiful people get to get laid and there's no strings attached, yeah. and they don't look at that. But meanwhile, then that's fine. Like, hey, if that's your opinion, like, hey, I'm angry or I'm jealous or I'm freaked out that you guys are getting laid. I'm not it. just. Say it, yeah. but well, instead they say we're against abortion. Good, here's a magic pill that's going to cut it in half right. or make it go away. Right. Oh no, we're against that too. Yeah, no, Hypocrites. It's, it's, yeah. Well, it's, I'm living proof that you cannot get laid in high school and come and be fine. Yeah, and, and, and be pro uh, morning after pill. 
Yeah. Uh, at the same time. You can be both. And also make a nice comeback, I'm guessing, as an adult with the acting and the writing <laughs> and the movie stuff. Oh, yeah. Vengeance it's, will it's, be mine. It's payback time, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All you girls. I hope they're listening. Lee's crying. All the way, all the way over from Australia. <laughs> so you wouldn't go to the prom with <laughs> right. me. Huh? I met you 15 minutes ago at the Skybox. Don't, don't look at me. <laughs> right. Totally. Jeez. You know what? He's close to the yeah, truth there. <laughs> no, I know. I know how it goes. Success you know, is the best revenge, right? You know Gary? what you want it is is a late. You know who you want your daughter dating? A guy who got a ton of action in high school and is a little burnt out on it by the time he gets to her. It's boring. Not a guy who's been without. And right. he's hungry. You don't no, want the guy with the eye of the tiger. Every single guy that got a ton of action in high school is now living in a trailer, like yeah. punching right. out yeah. job as a so bouncer in some way. Still yeah. had a better life than us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He'd still trade his life. And he, he, just for the eight months he had in high school, still best to throw it all away. Right. If we had it all to do again, he'd still get laid in high school. Not getting any action in high school is the greatest motivational thing in the world. Absolutely. At, all from six, Bill Gates to any... Uh, just, <laughs> <laughs> well, now wait a minute. He he was quite the man about campus. Oh, oh, yeah? Bill, oh, he nailed, yeah, sure, <laughs> nailed everybody on the cheerleading team, the drill squad. Yeah, yeah, of course, he, it motivates you. And and there's this weird. It's an interesting, it's an interesting question because how much? Like you have two sons, Drew. Yeah. Now you don't want them to go without completely, or they yeah. could they they could get a little angry. Mm. They could become like Lee. It could become yeah. you know sort of they get that <laughs> or the guys who could revenge up, uh, stuff. Carrie and Lee. Yeah. yeah, you become a serial killer, or whatever. On on the other hand, guys having too much fun, getting too much action, he gets soft. You want to you, know, you want to be a little bit hungry. Yeah, get get something out of the system, and then. That's right. It. You may have to do that yourself, Drew. No. I'm sorry. No. As a doctor, no. I think it would be all right. As you a doctor, it's not just it's an it's extraction. It's, not it's, just it's just a an procedure. Extraction. It's nothing sexual about it. It's purely a procedure. Right. All right. Scientific. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, Honey, I so, need to do some uh, experimentation. Here's what you want, then. I think you want, <laughs> I want, you, you want your boy to have a uh, little tough, tough uh, ninth and tenth grade. Or grade yeah. nine and grade ten, yeah. as you guys may know. Yeah. It. And then... We can't just agree on that internationally, by the way, whether it's 10th grade or t grade 10. Right. Shouldn't we just go ahead and decide on that? Yeah. We're so close. With Canada, it's right. like grade 9, and here it's a 10th grade or 9th grade. Let's just go ahead and flip a coin and decide what, what we're going to call it, and then it'll well, be that Australia, way for the world. it's year 10. Year oh, it's 10. year 10. You say year 9, year 8. Oh, really? Year 10. Uh-oh. Wow. But then... Now, now that... Well, I'm sorry, but you're not in the running. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> here's, what you need, here's what you need to do, Australia. We did bring Yahoo Serious to the world, so no one well, can trust us. And Jacko. <laughs> Jacko. <laughs> Oi! All right, the point is, no one knows who that guy <laughs> He's is the greatest anymore. battery salesman in the world. I know. Who's Jacko? He sold Energizer batteries. He was a <laughs> former Geelong football player. You don't... He was a big, me? He was no. a big, burly, bald guy who... <laughs> Had somehow, I got to believe, somehow men at work paved the way for right. Chaco. They, they really did. There was this, and, and maybe Olivia Newton-John. There was a weird, we became uh, obsessed with Australia for like 10 minutes yes. in 1983. Yes, yes. And then we sort of burnt out on them real quick. Like, <laughs> yeah. We yeah. still haven't recovered. No, no, we have a national day of mourning. Yeah. Yeah, Yahoo Serious took care of it. It, it is really yeah. Australia was like it's like when you move and you discover a restaurant nearby. Oh, greatest Thai right. food ever! And you, just, you eat it five nights a week for Truck three months, and then that's it. You know, <laughs> now, then it's ten years of just driving past it. That's what we're doing with Australia now. We're done. We still got the crocodile hunter, yeah. crocodile Dundee. Remember him? Yeah. Crocodile Dundee. I think he's the one that paved the way for Jocko. Yeah. No, because Jocko was before around that? before him. He was. Drew, don't don't give me the lineage of Jocko. I, I, I know you know, you know, know who Jocko is. I remember Jocko. <laughs> let, me, let me show you the chart that I got in the car, please. <laughs> we don't want you guys to know. We're we're whispering down there, going, "Be quiet. The Americans will hear us and and realize we're all having sex, and we've the morning after pill is freely available." I know you and guys come down here and raid our party. You're lucky you're so far away because we're like this close to coming over there. We really are because everybody who goes over there is like, "Oh my God, it's amazing. You mm -hmm. have yeah, to go. You. It's just." It's, you have to go, but it's it's 15 hours on the yeah. on the plane. 21 or something. Or, what, what is it? What is from it? La, from L.A., it's 16. Yeah. 16 yeah. hours. It's brutal. And it's isn't there, there's a layover you have to take, though, isn't there? On the no, way? You, can, you can go you can take you can it stop, straight. Yeah, you can stop in New Zealand, though. Right? Take it straight if in. You want to. But see, that's the whole thing. It's like, it's, it's a, everyone says you have to go, you have to yeah. go, you have to go. But then you weigh 16 hours against, like, literally an hour and 45 minutes to some spot in Mexico on the Yucatan right. or on the peninsula right. or something. Right. And it's like... 
Uh, 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 two, you know, look, I could see if it was 16 hours versus like 12 hours yeah. or nine hours or something, but it's That's literally two hours, yeah. two hours we yeah. can get somewhere in Mexico, get ourselves some cheap food, and so we're going to be drunk either way. <laughs> I, uh, we're not going to remember what's going on. All we know is we, we, we've almost drowned twice, but we're loaded. Right. All right. I, I still, we got to, I want to go to the Great Barrier Reef. I know. That's where right. I want to go. Because yeah. yeah. we, we heard there, that's where they have the giant clams. That's oh, right. <laughs> the, the 500 pound clams. That's the Bar and Bay Hotel. <laughs> no, no, no. The giant, the giant, giant clams. We the were giant obsessed ones. with those the here. Ones those were the big scalloped lips. Does this have yeah. anything to do with the show? And they, is, they, is this on? <laughs> it should. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they think it's a double entendre. We're Honestly, actually no, no, interested no. in the really? giant clams. We're, we're not talking about a, no. a fat broad. I think it's just a ruse. No, 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 the word no, no. We, they, we looked it up on the web one. Wow, <laughs> we Helen Aussie is business. Up to 500 pounds. I was at the Great Barrier Reef trying to convince some British backpackers that I was the hard man of Australia. I was the right. jacko. Oh, really? Off this particular boat. And I was like, being an Australian's a daily struggle to survive. <laughs> Everything here will kill you, from jellyfish to spiders. And I kid you not, <laughs> five minutes after my speech to them, I jumped into the water and was promptly stung by a blue bottle jellyfish. Now... In Australia, we have the blue ring octopus and the blue bottle jellyfish, and I couldn't remember which one kills you. And so I'm screaming at these British backpackers that I've just given them tough man speech to, going, help me, help me, <laughs> thinking that my flesh is rotting off my back. Wow. And they're like, we don't know what to do. You told us not to touch it. And it wow. turns out I was fine. We are, right? Yeah. Well, that's why I'm not going to Australia. It's yeah. not right. the plane flight. No, no. It's that and the uh, red back spider. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tough spider there, Drew. Drew, you know nothing about Australia. No. Practically a tour Practically guy. Practically nothing. All right, listen, we got to go on the internet and show these guys a giant clam. <laughs> it's 500 pounds. <laughs> it's a sh- giant not, clam. It's it could be a ruse to get you to come stuff. and stay no, no, in someone's no, hotel. No, no, yeah. no, no. I'm on down to my hotel. I have the only giant clam in all of Great Barrier <laughs> Reef. Okay? <laughs> I'll look it up right now. Look it up right now. Okay. All right. And and by the way, just to give you a, like a scale size of the shell, yeah. if, if a, a cigarette that would go in this, if, if you made an ashtray out of it, would be the size of a redwood. Yeah. Yes, true. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what we do with our wildlife. We, we take our turtles, we take our clams, make we make like ashtrays out of everything. They make them look like they're smoking. Buy an ashtray the size of the giant clam from our gift shop. <laughs> George? Yes. You're uh, 21. Yeah. What's up? Uh, what happened was... Back in March, I would say, I was dating a girl. I'm still dating her now. I was planning on uh, proposing to her in December, Christmas, actually. Mm-hmm. Back in March, she was 17, and she had like a dime size. It looked like a little bruise on her stomach. Mm-hmm. And then uh, it kept on growing, and I couldn't really, you know, take her to the doctor myself or anything because I was afraid because she's uh, underage at the time. It's basically not my call. Um, Today, yeah. Junior. That's your call. <laughs> how how old? How long ago was this? Adam Sandler. This is back in March. And how old, March. Is, how old was she at the time? She's seventeen. Now she's yeah. eighteen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. And uh, now now it's about a dollar size. So I'm wondering if it's wrong of me to kind of drop the hat on her or what I should do because uh, she went to the doctor, found out it's I guess morphia is what it's called. Type of what is that, Drew? What do you mean, drop the hat? And and by the way, uh, you guys being from uh, lands uh, abroad might think that drop the hat is a popular American yeah. euphemism or right. colloquialism. We've specific. never heard of it yeah. either. We, yeah. Our drop callers are such idiots. I have no idea what he means. What do you mean, drop the hat? Is that like drop a dime? No, I'm sorry. It's, uh, if I should go through with the whole proposal on marrying her, I was planning on marrying her next June. I mean, both so you're talking about what? dropping your your engagement because of morphia. That, that's what I should have said. Morphia is yeah. morphia is nothing. Yeah, it's a, it's nothing. It, it's a, it's a little plaque that that gets on your skin. It goes away with vitamin E very often. What what, what what's what, wrong what, with you? George? Yeah, what they tell you? Well, the doctors were telling her it's like a type of lupus, and she, no. she has to carry an IV around rather than take steroids. And if she takes steroids, then she's gonna. Oh no no! She needs to. See, did she see a dermatologist? She she went actually today to see a rheumatologist uh, down. No the dermatologist. Dermatologist. Uh, yeah, she, she, she already saw a dermatologist. Morphia is usually a very benign condition. Very benign. Well, is there something that sounds close to well, it? Well, it's, it's a rel- no. Way? He's right. It's a relative of scleroderma and lupus. And if it, if there are systemic manifestations, morphia has a very low probability of being associated with systemic rheumatic disease. Very low. Yeah, but he's thinking about marrying this girl, and, you know... They're, they're screwing him I mean, up. The, the doctor's telling her, you know, it, it, it might not, you can stop it now, kind of make it dormant, but it can never go away. Well, 
George, uh, here's a real question. How how are her gums? You've got to give her that look. You have to pull her right back, check that. Yeah. <laughs> Check, uh, look, you're not, George, I would get a, a, you're not I, buying but, a pack animal. You're, you're marrying a woman. But I, I, I would feel <laughs> sorry for her now, by the way, and not just yeah, for really. Morphia, more, more for more Yua. I, I would get a, a, a second opinion about this because I, I, my understanding of Morphia is very benign. Unless there is something else there to suggest she has other rheumatic disease, uh, I would really look around for some opinions about this. Did you get a well, second that, opinion? That's the problem, Dr. Drew. Like, I, I've been pushing for her because I do care about her, try to have her see. She's gone to maybe six doctors so far. All right. Finally. Well, listen. Why, why all George, I hate to say it, but, you, you know, you got to put her down. <laughs> that's the only thing you can do. The, uh, because she, she, she needs to be put down before she breeds. Did one scare her, and now she's running around trying to figure out what, what the actual reality is? She's not scared. She's just more, I mean... Concerned, she knows that you know she wants to be All right, let, The doctors are kind of not giving her a straightforward answer. Well, it sounds like somebody's scary or, or confusing her. Well, let her go. Uh, by the way, you're in Riverside. Yeah, not yeah, the nine. They, they, we changed the nine five one, so you can't. You, you don't. You did, I, I assume they only have taxidermists in Riverside. <laughs> they actually have physicians there. You no, got to get out of Riverside and get a second opinion. Yeah, yeah. No, she's okay. Good. Diego. Okay, so George, here's your thing. She's still seventeen. No, she's 18 as of She's uh, 18. December. All right. Don't think about marriage for a little while. Yeah, you guys are young anyway. It's a sign. It's a sign you should delay this. Right. There you go. All right? But delay I, bet, I, I bet, yes, delay it. Just because Just delay you're, it. you're both too young. And, but, and I don't trust him. Yeah. So just uh, give it a break. Let, let her get cured. I'll look yeah. up more for you. Yeah. yeah. Right. Drew's going to look it up. Yeah. Now go, but uh, find the giant clam, too. She's well, got well, it. Yeah. She's got it. Yeah, more okay, Michelle is it. Carrie Ellis uh, here tonight. Uh, Lee Wanell here tonight. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> name of the uh, new movie out this Friday. Scary, scary, scary stuff. We're going to take a, a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LVE-191. Jimmy Eat World in here tomorrow night. And uh, tonight we're talking about the uh, movie Saw with uh, Carrie Elwes and Lee one l yeah, yes. yeah, one baby, L. one L, baby doll. <laughs> uh, man, just looking through uh, Carrie's uh, bio here, forgot all the uh, good movies. I mean, everyone knows Princess Bride and uh, and then uh, you know Robin Hood, Men Tight stuff, but uh, Hot Shots, forgot about that. Yeah, Days of Thunder, forgot right. about that one. Right. And uh, Glory, great movie. Thank you. Drew, you ever see Glory? No. The Civil War thing. Oh, yeah. I've heard about that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Great movie, uh, Math, uh, Matthew, Matthew uh, Broderick, Broderick and Denzel uh, Washington, Denzel. Morgan Freeman. Great movie. Yeah. Oh, Drew, go watch that movie. <laughs> was this, yeah. Wait, what's it about? No, now it's about uh, the first oh. black regiment. I saw to fight it. I did war. see it. I did see 54. it. Fifty-four. They all got creamed Master going that creamed. one. Yeah, yeah that one uh, assault Fort Fort on the beach. Fort Wagner. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. You guys research he guests, right? Oh yeah. Oh, just preparing for the show. Did you? Yeah. Hours of prep. Well, we have a noon meeting. And uh, then we break for lunch at about 3, and then we meet back here about 5 o'clock to get started on the show. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Now, here's what happens. I come into the studio at uh, 30 seconds to 10, and uh, I know I'm late because Drew's sitting in my chair, which means he's now... <laughs> getting ready to start. The captain is right. drunk, and he's in the lounge, <laughs> and the co-pilot is taking Waiting over. Plane. It's going to try to land the plane. That's right. But uh, prepare for disaster. And by the way, uh, they did that whole uh, commission thing on that uh, flight that crashed uh, over Long Island. And yeah. they said it's because a guy was wagging the plane and trying to, you know, avoid some turbulence or lessen some turbulence of a jet stream of a, of a plane that had taken off before him. And they're doing this sort of pilot error thing. Right. Uh, but they didn't really explain in the article, like, uh, the tail's not supposed to break off when you wag the plane. Yeah. It's sort of yeah. semi-gently. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, they keep saying pilot error, but it's... It's as if you're riding a bike and you try to pop a wheel and the handlebars came off in your yeah, hands. Exactly. It's like, well, it's the error. The guy, well, no, the guy made the bike sort of screwed up, it seems yeah, like uh, to me. Yeah, totally. What is that? Yeah, really. It's, the tail's not supposed to come off. I mean, no. that's just, you know. <laughs> and, and if I'm the family of the, the dead pilot who yeah. did the little waggle thing who was trying yeah. to, they're trying to interrupt some stream or something, some jet wash from the plane that took off it, yeah. the thing snapped off. But I mean, yeah. is it, and the plane's supposed to hold together a little better uh, than that? You think so? One would think. And by the way, this I've been I've been talking about this. It's why uh, movies like our uh, shows like Lost and a Dangerous Message because the whole back of the plane breaks off. It's Keeps wide flying. open, really? and they crash land on the beach. Wow! Have you seen you no, seen Lost? No, I, I, I did. I saw 
saw that episode yeah. where the, it comes off and then people are it just flying. comes off and yeah. pe people are like there like oh my god the uh, the surfing cart <laughs> is falling out the back of the plane <laughs> and then it's like somebody tell the pilot we got to bring this thing down soon no we're not going to make Kennedy we'll put right. it down in Newark. Right. You know what I mean? It's right. like, uh, no, you have no body. Now, this is where you start the cartwheeling process, by right. the way. Right. I had a period of fear of flying when I lived with a metallurgist in, in Massachusetts, a guy, MIT metallurgist. Oh, he announced bad. He announced that uh, all, all metal eventually fractures. Oh, yeah. All metal. Yeah. yeah. Eventually. That's and not, it's just oh, yeah. a probability equation of uh, whether you're going to be on a plane where it suffers one of those. It, it's great. It, wow. it, there's nothing worse than a blowhard who scares you. It's called catastrophic well, failure. <laughs> <laughs> It's that one pilot you know tells you, you know, yeah. like two out of four planes crash. Most of these uh, bo replacement bolts and bearings coming out of Mexico in the underground. <laughs> Stuff but never been yeah, scoped. Shit, it's been my, the irony is, is we see a crack and we just paint right over it. You know what I mean? Most of the stuff's rejected out of Europe. We just gobble it up at wholesale prices and slap it right in the plane. No, they don't care. The guys who put the plane together don't fly the plane. No. You know, they, you know that right. blowhard totally. guy freaking you out? You're like, well, I am going to Australia tomorrow. Well, actually, not tomorrow. Today, it's now past midnight. I'm going to be leaving the airport in four hours. All right, good luck. <laughs> I had the guy. I had I had this guy. I had the, I, I I flew like uh, two days after nine eleven and had the. Uh, uh, I was literally talking to the guy going, "I'm on my way to the airport. Whoa, what for? Uh, I'm getting on a plane. Oh man, no way!" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm I'm getting on the plane. Oh wow." You got wave us, my friend. It's like, would you shut up? Right. I'm on the way to the airport. Right, totally. I'm not unless you know something. Right. Like if, if there's a bomb on this flight and you don't want me to get a fight. Yeah. But just the general sort of musings of uh ooh, wow. <laughs> well, okay then. <laughs> there's, there's a giant leap of faith happening anyway, I think, any time anyone lifts a huge piece of metal machinery and expects it to go through the air nicely and then land okay, in another I'm, I'm spot. I'm never yeah. flying again. No. The, the irony of after that, Mettler just made that announcement to me. Is, remember that plane with the fuselage roof lifted off? Hawaii. Yes. Uh, yes. That happened like a month later. Yeah. And it's like, okay. If you're on your way to the airport and you're listening to this, yeah. <laughs> just, uh, just don't just worry kidding. about it. We're, kidding. We're, just, yeah. we're just kidding. Yeah. Safer and dry. Here you go. Take don't take all. Do not. To Australia. You can still right. see giant clams. Yeah. If yeah. you take the boat. Yeah, yeah and uh, if you take a uh, take the cruise, yeah. Mm. Do they have cruises to Australia? That's too far. Mm. Is it take too far? my lovely cruise to see the giant <laughs> clam and then spend a nice evening in my beautiful hotel, home of the famous giant clams <laughs> of the Great Barrier Reef. Oi! That's what that. Jacko would say. <laughs> Dante? <laughs> True, I can't believe you don't know Jacko. I, I know can't... Jacko. I know Jacko. No, you don't. You know Jocko because I told you about Jocko. No, Jocko. I remember him in those commercials. You're the guy who thinks Crocodile Dundee came before Jocko. Well, I can't remember the chronology, but I Do I you remember, remember his single? He, the, I'm You're an joking. individual. Oh, really? That was the song he released. <laughs> really? Wow. How'd it go? It went, uh, I'm an individual, you can't fool me. That was the chorus. <laughs> right. Also in a, in, a, in a TV show. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> he was in a TV show out the here. The Highwayman. Too. Right. The high, wow. Oh, well, That's this good. is getting Listen, scary. I'm late. from Australia. Don't, right. don't cross me on Jacko. Yeah, <laughs> man, they got nothing going did on Yahoo's, over there. <laughs> <laughs> did Yahoo Serious ever have any hits in the in the charts at all? No, not song wise. After Young Einstein, he released a film called Reckless Kelly, and now I believe he's um, selling dishwashers or something <laughs> in Tasmania. <laughs> Dante, <laughs> my questions are going to my pecker. <laughs> Dante. Didn't I punch Dante Yes, up? yes, he's up. Dante. All right. Caller goes by Dante. He's not talking. All right. Well, screw Dante. Let's talk to a chick. Where's the girls? <laughs> Lexi? Yeah, Allison? Yeah, yeah, right. Lexi's only one. Lexi. All right. Lexi. Yeah, actually, it's Leslie. Leslie. Right. Yeah. 14. Yeah. What's up? Um. Okay, well, I've been going out with my boyfriend for four and a half months now, and... Last Friday, me and his best friend, they've been best friends since they were, like, two. Well, we all got high at his house, and my boyfriend, like, I don't know, he took it hard or whatever, and, like, he fell asleep for, like, 20 minutes, and while he was sleeping, I, <laughs> well, yeah, basically, I hooked up with his best friend, but then, like, me and his best friend started talking, and, like, I found out I like him, and I don't know what to do, because I like his best friend a lot better than him, but, like... Yeah. If I go out with him, then he'll know that we hooked up, and 
Like, I don't Great know whether this could just going. carry into adulthood. Like, yeah, it's kind we of all true. go out, me and your wife start making out, and I find out <laughs> I like her because she smells good. And so we hook up for a while. It's just anything can happen with whippets. But yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. What, what are we doing? Are you smoking? Are we doing whippets or are we smoking <laughs> yeah. pot? What are we doing? Do people still do whippets? I yeah. do. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It was just pot. It was weed. Okay. Just weed. And, and was your boyfriend passed out in the room that you were in? Um, yeah, he was next to us. Oh, oh. And, and when you say hook up, you just mean make out? Uh, no. Well, like, I, um, he ate me out and I gave him head. <gasps> Oh and my God. God. In All 20 right. minutes? Was your boyfriend lying next to you? Wait a minute. Well, Where'd no, you go to wait. finishing school? Bigger <laughs> question. <laughs> I'm guessing abroad. Geneva, I'm guessing. Yeah, Switzerland. 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 Absolutely. You know? Oh, Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> but hang on. He was passed out for 20 minutes, she said. So that means everything had to be signed, sealed, delivered. The conversation, the, the, the ice breaking, right. the act. Uh, yeah, and finish. Was forget the timing. Uh, forget ice breaking. I think <laughs> the, the way <laughs> was breaking. doing it next to the boyfriend. Well, that is, was he I, in the room? Was surreal. Yeah. It was right next to him. Right, right next, next to, him. to them. Yeah. No, if he's listening to this, he's like, what? <laughs> That's so not cool, man. <laughs> we don't all sound that way. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is horrible. And by the way, I like. Uh, she slipped this one in, too, which is, uh, you know, after the uh, copious amounts of oral sex we had, we began talking and discovered <laughs> we, we like shared affection for each other. But this is what I'm saying in the two Oh, my minutes. God. Yeah. Lexi. Le Le Leslie. Leslie. I mean, Leslie. Leslie. I'm yeah. reading the screen. Uh, oh. Okay, so your boyfriend was in the same room when you engaged in oral sex with this guy. Yeah, he was lying next to me. Are you really angry with your boyfriend? Do you not like him? No, I like him. I just like his friend better. Yeah, I understand that, but what, to, to no, do this great is such, respect a, and affection yeah, it's for such the man. a horrible, aggressive <laughs> act. <to do> <laughs> what, if he, what if he had woken up? <laughs> You would have had to kill him, by the way. Hey, this is so not cool, man. <laughs> no, that, he would just assume he was having a horrible, horrible can dream. I, can, I ask Liz, can I ask Leslie if, does he know now? No, does he your, doesn't know. He still doesn't know? Well, here's, here's if my we went advice. Out, if, if I went out with his best friend, like, he'd know. He'd be like, well, what the hell, you know? No, no, what well, you, you do is... You first of all, you break up. Break yeah. up with him, break then up. wait a month. Then yeah. start going out with the best friend. Or and maybe then hide like, the fact that you've been going out for a while. But I don't well, want to wait. No. Like, like, I already like hooked up with his best friend again. Like, You can wait a month. I mean, you're only 14. And yeah. And you hooked up again? Well, yeah, but he was next to us again, but he was, like, at the bathroom, so, yeah. You, you hooked up in the Lexus no, while he was in the bogus. bathroom? Oh, hold on. No yeah. way. No, no way. Until he's in the bathroom this time? This is not bogus. You don't believe it? No. no. Really? mm, -mm. But but it's so outrageous. So outrageous. But how could she time it? What did they do while he was in the bathroom? Mm, well, I, I, first off, this guy moves. <laughs> yeah. This guy. <laughs> this, yeah, like, I'll be right back, guys. <laughs> I'm just going to the bathroom. <laughs> and this uh, other guy's like a ferret. He's just pow. He's on top and he's done. <laughs> yeah. It, or you could continue to go out with the boyfriend to just keep feeding him the whippets uh -huh. or the weed and hey. then wait for him to pass out. Leslie. Yeah. You say he was in the bathroom. Yeah, he left. We were in the movie theater. And he just gone for like five minutes. We only like made out. It wasn't like anything. Oh, that's refreshing. That's no right. no 69ing in the aisle or anything. <laughs> no. No. Okay, Use, using the imitation butter oh, flavoring as a lubricant. Nothing. Wow. No. Wow, it's, it's really, it's like we turn the calendar back 100 yeah. years. Mm. I imagine this is how courting was around the turn of the century. <laughs> it's this new age of conservatism, compassionate conservatism. Wow, right. I say it's gone too far. Yeah, I think you need to let the guy know, man. Yeah, no, just no, can't no, 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 just carry, carry, carry. End carry. this relationship. End the, that's what I mean. End, end it. it. Yeah. Just yeah. end it. Just let him know it's, you're it's over. You're being very cruel, Leslie. Yeah. I don't know why you're being so cruel to this guy. All right, and 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 by, and by the, the way, way, she's fourteen. You're fourteen. This this is going to uh, end up in disaster, Leslie. <laughs> what what is up? This is going to be like the Hindenburg in a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the humanity. <laughs> He's going to catch you at some point. I mean, you're just tempting uh, fate there. I think. Yeah, can, how, about, how about you reel it in a little bit? To quote Homer Simpson, welcome to Dumpsville. Population, you. Yeah. Just get rid of the guy. Yeah. And then... 2004, seriously. He what? It's 2004. Yeah. I mean, it's not like it's like the 1800s where, like... No, right. Like but the guy, like, you're leading this right. guy on. You right. Know right. Know Just I mean? break up with your boyfriend, would you? Please. Okay. All right, you've and, got and, to. And you're, you, please, you're, you're going to get pregnant in the uh, ninth grade. Understand? Oh. Just slow it down a little. Would you reel it in? Okay, whatever. 
Yeah, okay. Well, well, well wait a minute. What, what do you mean, whatever? <laughs> yeah. Well, like, what do you want me to do? Like, like not have oral sex? Well, Is that what you mean, well, or like what? I would like you to stop using your sexuality as a, as a weapon. A, as a, as a weapon. <laughs> By the way, but you know, in terms of getting getting beaten up, though, better if someone uses sexuality on you. As, than, as like, beatings brass go, knuckles. As yeah, beatings go, yeah. It's, it's a good one. But I, I just we were. Yeah, how about you focus on your friends, a little school, a little bit, something like that. I mean, your behavior. I just, I've always been like a very sexual person. I, you're sexually you're, abused. You're, you're 14. Manure? Unless you're talking about a past life, we don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> I've always, I like this. I like to make these proclamations. Yeah, I've always been yeah. a very sensual person. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the yeah. 70s were a great time for me. Uh, 20 years before I was born. And then AIDS came along and screwed everything up when I was two. <laughs> she had to be abused. <laughs> Has to be abused for All right. I, I don't care. Here's the thing. Break up with a guy. Uh, use uh, 30 condoms and uh, never call the show again. Mm. All right? Mm. All right. We're going to uh, take ourselves uh, just a little bit of a break. Lee Wanell here tonight. Carrie Owens here tonight. The movie Woo. Saw. Going to see it this Friday when it comes out. We'll take a uh, quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. That's uh, Drew out getting uh, Carrie and Lee out of the, uh, out of the hall there. Sit on down. We're on the radio. Are we really? Yeah. Unacceptable. <laughs> Unruly guests. Yeah. Well, you guys. You guys are fantastic. <laughs> really. We get. We get so many knobs in here. It's nice to have some with a decent <laughs> sense of humor, and a uh, little education. Yes, Drew. <laughs> yes, Adam. All right. Uh, and anyone want to call in and guess what Drew was referring to when he said I had a texture of oh, this or that. felt like this? It's never going to happen. By the way. Uh, Carrie and uh, Lee are both here uh, promoting Saw, which is uh, coming out uh, this Friday. It's a nationwide release, yes? Mm -hmm. Large, yeah, it's large 25, scale? 25, and it's the it's only well. R-rated horror film that's going to be out this Halloween weekend. Oh, oh, there you go. oh. Yeah, we had some screenings in Sundance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and some of the audience members were, like, visibly upset and had to be escorted out. I'm not nice. Kidding. Yeah. I like that. So uh, we're telling Nurses people if you're too squeamish... Yeah, they have high blood pressure. Well, but let's just Don't let's bother. invent let's invent another horror film that's coming out on on. Let's pretend there's another horror film that's competing with us that's coming out this Halloween weekend. Let's call it The, the Grudge. Grudge. Okay. Uh, and <laughs> let's it stars a cast member of Buffy. Say yeah. It's, let's say it's PG thirteen. Why would you see that film instead of Saw? You wouldn't. Saw? You wouldn't. No. And, and by the way, first off, heard a uh, horrible review by uh, Roper and uh, Ebert. By the way, on that. And number two. How uh, well uh, traveled is that road where the uh, house is uh, haunted? Everybody? Right, yeah. Yeah. Enough that. that's enough of that. Yeah. <laughs> How long can you stay in a house when you know it's haunted? At a certain point, like, I say you get out. Get out. Man. For me, it's like Richard about about brunch. Right. About <laughs> brunch. I, I do breakfast, and then brunch, and I'm thinking about lunch, but I think no, now I'm out. Let's spend that's another night here. It's not a yeah. Richard Pryor joke. He's a get out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You just get out. It's like uh, Amityville Horror. Yeah. The house is get actually out. yelling at you to get out. <laughs> if you're still sticking around after yeah. the house is telling you to get out. Yeah, you, you're dumber than you know than than you think. Yeah, really. Yeah, and uh, so who needs that grudge, by the way? And that grudge, it has to be promising because that movie made forty million dollars. I think its first wow. week out right. surprised a lot of people, and it says to me that people want to see uh, well, horror so did, movies. Dude, where's my car? No, I'm not. I'm not saying it's good based on the amount of money that it made. I'm saying this is this is a good opportunity thing for, for you guys. This is opportunity, you know? yeah. and uh, it, it, I don't understand. By the way, we've talked about this before when you when you when you talk about Blair Witch Project or you just talk about you know the Friday the Thirteenth series or uh, or Halloween or whatever it is. Why someone wouldn't just take a, a small budget, make a horror movie, make the money back every time? I, I don't understand. You know the huge multi billion dollar extravaganzas. Right. No. Well, these guys are living proof of of how you can do it. Because they really had uh, an idea to make the movie very cheaply anyway. Why don't you tell them about that, man? Well, yeah, we, we, we were back in Australia, uh, and we just finished film school, and so we wanted to make a film, <laughs> put those years of school right. uh, to, to use. And we realized we had no money, and so we said, all right, let's pay for a film ourselves. And the cheapest thing we could think of was two guys <laughs> chained up in a room. Wow. Right. And it's just sort of a weird sort of cosmic accident that it ended up snowballing from us doing it in Australia with our own money to doing it over here in L.A. with Kerry and Danny Glover and all and, this. And getting getting the financial backing to do it, do it yeah. again, do yeah. it, yeah. Do it mean, right, so to speak. It was, it was living proof that a, a, you know, a, a, a script will, will get you, you know... Did you guys shoot an actual... They're living the American dream, these guys, I'm telling you. Really, <laughs> truly. 
truly. Did you? Well, you saw the scene. You that was the. Thing. They sent yeah. They sent us. Uh, this is how I got involved. They sent us a little DVD, an eight minute DVD that these guys have both made, Lee and James, mm -hmm. of a scene that's in the movie, mm -hmm. uh, where James is playing a, a, the part that's actually played by a woman in the movie, <coughs> and he has a reverse <laughs> bear trap. That was me mouth. playing the part, James <laughs> directing. And, uh, yeah, and he has a reverse bear trap in his mouth. Wait, and what's a reverse bear trap? Does that mean, mean like a bear trap? Yeah, it's and it's on a timer, and, and if, he, if he can't find the key in time, so the, the trap's gone. The trap's going to go off and split his skull in two. It's and like a, it's like almost a it's one of these medieval of the pair of braces that fits into your lower and upper jaw. Like, oh, yeah, really? It hooks yeah. in, and then when it opens, it goes... Oh, like, like so it's it's a bear trap that doesn't snap close. Shut, it's, yeah. snaps it's not it's like open. a giant clam. <laughs> it's like it's like when the giant clam yawns. Right, it opens yeah, and it splits it your head. Open. Yeah, I'd much rather have my head smashed by a bear trap than right. split open. And it was so, it was such a compelling little eight minute film that mm -hmm. I sent back an email with just the word "wow" with an exclamation mark, and I just knew these guys had uh, such a vision already. Wow. You know, it, in the scene, this little doll comes out in a, on a tricycle, and I went. <laughs> Oh, these guys are out of their minds. And, and did, you, did you shoot... And we got to take a break, so we'll get to this when we get back. But did you do a whole movie, or did you do some just, scenes? Just a scene. Just, just one scene. Oh, man. Am I angry and just jealous? <laughs> All right, hold on. We got to take a uh, little bit of a break. I'm going to pick uh, Lee's brain while we're, uh, while we're on commercial break. Uh, Carrie here as well. Uh, movie Saw coming out this Friday. We'll take a quick break. Be right back after this. <laughs> Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Jimmy Eat World in here tomorrow night. Carrie Elwes in here tonight. Uh, Lee Wanell in here tonight. Saw, name of the movie, this Friday. Only R-rated movie out on Halloween weekend. Do you know that, Drew? That's amazing. And you got, here's the whole thing. Here, here's, here's the way I feel. I, I never really thought about it, but I, if you're going to see a horror movie, you got to go R. Mm. Otherwise, it's it's like you know when you go to the Mexican restaurant and you you want the margarita and they go, we make ours with wine. <laughs> you're like, no. <"Yeah."> <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Hit myself in the head with a shoe or salt yeah. shaker to get effed up? Right. Come on, yeah. that ain't getting yeah. drunk. No. That's that's what the that's what the PG is to the horror movie. That's the yeah. margarita made totally. with wine. Yeah, wine. Yeah. Totally. You know, I have to drink 35 of these before I yeah. even yeah. begin to catch a box. Wine, wine out of a box. That's right. Yeah. Oh, we have a box of wine that we mix in with our margarita. <laughs> Screw you. I need booze. <laughs> I don't even like to mix in with the tequila. I'd much rather just have a margarita with just, just tequila. But the white wine one. Oh, I look. Don't serve it then. And don't tell me it's good. I, I, it might taste good. I'm not getting effed up. <laughs> <laughs> True, am I right? You're right, of course. All right, that's so why what this movie, a, a, that's, yeah. what, that's what the grudge is. You want a wine margarita out of a box? Enjoy the grudge. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> you want to uh, grudge it up. You want a double shot of uh, Cuervo 1800. Yeah. You go see the saw, my <laughs> that's friend. Right, that's right, man. You're goddamn right. All right, I'm done, Drew. I have nothing else to <laughs> say. Right, that's it. Tonight. I think that was good, but that's enough. Yeah. All right. Don't take any calls at this point. Whatever uh, you do, uh, no call. Uh, do uh, not uh, what? What? Don't? You don't think I'll we, take we calls? Not, we could not play accordion countdown, too. He thinks he's a boss of me. <laughs> it's because he's a doctor. He can tell me what to do. <laughs> well, you know what? Maybe I'm going to take some calls. What do you think of that? I'll be upset. But yeah, <laughs> look where my finger is, huh? You think you can stop Very me? Very disturbing. So Pow. Oh. We're going to the phones. All right? All right, smart guy? Keep going. We'll take another call. <laughs> Ian? Hey, Adam, what's up? Drew thinks he can tell me what Don't to do. do he thinks he can manipulate me. <laughs> I showed him. What's up, Ian? Hey, dude, I uh, just wanted to say I live my life by the uh, Adam Carolla gospel. I use my horn religiously, and I always blow through the red-hand arrows. Or the yeah, red good arrows. man. Good man. Yeah. What's up? Uh, my question is, uh, dude, I can have multiple orgasms on the same erection, mm. and uh, I was wondering if during sex I should take off the condom like pull out and take off the condom and put on a new one each time. Yes, or yes. On no, no, no. Take off. You, 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 that's how condoms get torn. That yeah. Way. All right. But, uh, th that, that is, by the way, not multiple, multiple orgasms. That's a sequence of orgasms. Well, right, but okay. it's 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 uh, our like we say, uh, same boner, new jizz. <laughs> that's 
It's like we always say. Guys. Like we always <laughs> say. My grandpa used to say, <laughs> like the Petridge Farms guy used to say. It really is like a commercial. It's a morning cereal commercial. Same Man. boner, new chin. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it just means your factory's working doubly hard. Your next check clears before your last one's been spent. Yeah, but it's not multiple. Exactly. So. I, 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 but I, I'm saying for a guy who good. can't really have a multiple orgasm, that's a that's multiple pretty good. orgasm. Uh, yeah. Okay. Right. Is he practicing tantric sex? Or? Yeah, what are you doing? No, not at all. He's just, just 20. Just, that's the way yeah. it's been ever since yeah, he's just 12, 20. first started jacking off. All right. All right. Well, uh, consider yourself in some sort of a rarefied, beat-off ass. <laughs> Mazel tov. Yeah. You're, 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 the, you're the best of the best when it comes to beating off. <laughs> okay? All right. Welcome to I Top Gun. To... Yeah. They like good. S- Section 8. Survivor should write a song about you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And by the way, is it, uh, I don't know, we're Sting from England. I don't want to, I don't want to fake yeah, sure but I, I find it obnoxious when he, when he goes on like Oprah and talks about banging his wife for nine hours yeah. and she's sitting right there next to him. And then they take a tour of one of his many homes. Oh, it's like sort of live. Oh, I'm going to explain you how to live your life. And, uh, it's, oh, oh, well. And by the way, you always feel like right. a, a jackass because it's like <laughs> what I do is, well, you know, I sleep, I sleep an hour and a half at night, a night. I get up at the four. We do, uh, we do the yoga right. for uh, three hours. Hours, right. Then it's fresh pressed juice, and mm-hmm. then it's a tantric love making right, for nine uh, hours. For nine <laughs> hours, and then it's off to work with the indigenous people of uh, who the f cares. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I got to write another platinum uh, selling CD with uh, more indigenous people. And I'm like, uh, well, let's see. I roll out of bed at noon. I break wind, I get back in the bed, <laughs> and I beat off, and I complain about my dad. Those shows aren't as bad as... I've just discovered being over here in America, those sh- those uh, look how rich these people are shows. Yeah. And that Lindsay Lohan took five of her friends to St. <laughs> Tropez, oh, and it cost $16,000. The I fabulous know. life of, of Tara they do, it, they do it on MTV, too, and they're like... They do that thing, too, where they're like... Uh, Brad liked the new Land Rover so much that he bought Jennifer one, just like, well, yeah. okay, it's a $45,000 car. He gets paid uh, $13 million. It's not, it's really, it's like one of us driving a moped. Yeah, right. it, it, yeah that's what you do when you have a ton of money. You, you buy a do car with like it. Do people like watching this, though? Do they yeah. like looking in their... He did he arriving in Saint-Tropez in the biggest yacht ever to arrive in this harbor. <laughs> yeah, once owned by the Sultan of fill-in-the-blank. Right. And, uh, yeah... I know, and I don't know if it if it, it I really psychologically it has to damage people that are just sitting in the uh, crappy pull. apartment staring yeah. at the rust colored <laughs> carpet with the you know t- right. TV with the rabbit ears on it and they're using a pair of vice grips to change the channel. It's got to be brutal, right? Yeah, yeah. And you know you know what the thing is, and here's an interesting thought. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking that I have thoughts about this, but. Uh, you know, they would say, like, uh, I grew up in a uh, crappy house. Not, not, you know, we didn't have any major, major problems. A little wel- welfare, some food stamps, and a little depression floating around. And <laughs> I would standards. get, they, standard. they would always say, they would always say, um, we were poor, but we weren't proud. That's the twist in our family. We're mm, poor, but nice. not proud. We would gladly borrow money from anybody and give it to them <laughs> and not pay it back. So in poor, but no pride, Drew, which is a twist, again, for the Corollas. But here's, here's, that too. here's what happened. Uh, they were to have these shows like Samford and Son, where they lived in a basically right, a, a right. garbage can. Right. And, and they would say, well, maybe that's not a great message to put across. But the, the, the message that was horrible was the Brady Bunch. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. everyone loved each yeah, other sure. and they lived in a big yeah. house and they all yeah. sat down and said grace. That was the depressing part. It's yeah. actually better to watch people that are lower down. Right. Yeah. It, ma- it makes you feel like, wow, this guy hey, found someone who's got it worse than we do. Yeah. Right. Watching the Santa Pay stuff and the P. Diddy and all that kind of stuff, it's, it's brutal when you have nothing. It creates envy. And then I think you get unrealistic. Yeah. You go screw college. I'm going the P Diddy route. Right. But you never get. You no. never. You never there seems arrive. To be a whole emphasis now, though, on the bling bling. Yeah, yeah more right. than ever. It's, it's like, like how rich are they? It's rubbing the poor people's faces in the dirt. Right. Yeah. And uh, and and the idea that you you know you got rims that never stop spinning and right. you're wearing a hubcap size a medallion like around they, your neck. And the guy tries. I'm to talking trick about. You. I think we're talking about the Asians, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think we just go out and say it. We are talking about the Asians. Let's let's not skirt around the issue. We're talking the Asians with the big triple chrome rims and the Cadillac Escalade. Say bling bling. Forty two inch plasma airbag. Right. Yeah. Bring bring. Plasma. <laughs> bring bring. Drew, bring bring. Got it. Come on, buddy. All right. All right. All right. Uh, Aaron, bring bring. Bring Asians. bring definitely.
Hey, uh, Aaron. Yeah. You're 24. Yeah. What's happening? Um, well, me and my girlfriend have been together for a couple years now, and, uh, you know, we want to uh, try something new. Um, you know, I've been experimenting with this and toying with the idea, and, uh, you know, she's kind of small. I'm like 6'4", so I'm... Hang on. As soon as the guy said there's only two options, that that, that whole intro was... was By the way, yeah. A lead into either A, anal sex, or B, three, threesome. If you're, if you're her father, let's just say... <laughs> And you're He's hearing this conversation. You know, we've been together for some years, and we've been meaning to try something a little different. We're both open-minded. Of course, I'm a big man. She's a small. <laughs> that's like you're, you're putting a shotgun Sinai, in your mouth. Yeah, you're Sinai trying Sinai to get, kicking your shoe off, trying to get the toe <laughs> onto the trigger, right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, that's what you do, right? Absolutely. <laughs> and, then, and then you know what's coming. Here it comes. <clears throat> Here it comes. Now, I suggested water-soluble lube, but she said no. She's a tough gal. She prides it. Uh, okay, where's the shotgun? <laughs> Pull the It's gone. <laughs> so, hey, now, you've been fr- thinking <clears throat> for some time. Now, you know my friend Lucius. He's also a large man, and he <clears throat> he happened to come over. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. All right. Aaron? Yes. You're 24. Yes, All right. So, so uh, keep going. What'd you do? The answer is A. I haven't done anything yet. Uh, Nothing. We had this A and B scenario. I said A. No, okay. So... Like, I've tried some stuff, not really, like, all the way, since you already know what the thing is all about. But, yeah. Well, it says here it's about, uh, it's about anal sex. Yeah. All right. All right. And uh, you want to you know if that's a good idea? Well, because if you go too far and you damage something in there, you rip it. You know, yeah. you can't really. I mean, how embarrassing is that when you go in the emergency room? Yeah, doctor, I, you know, killed her or whatever. Sure. It's sure. a bad times. Yeah, it's not a good idea. Yeah, it's bad times. Exactly. So that's why I was like, if you do it, is this like, you know, should you be easy? You know, I mean. No. No. That, no, no it, <laughs> now, you go 100%. If you go half speed, that's when you get hurt. That's what my football Jack coaches used to say. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to anally rape somebody, you go 110%. Anything under that, you, you hurt. That's how people get hurt. for re-election, they would call it. <laughs> Gentlemen. Yeah, yeah now grab any. Break it down. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, uh, is he bogus? Is this bogus or what? I, I don't know. I, it's weird. All right, all right. Uh, let me try to figure this out. Aaron. Yeah. What do you do for a living? Something, something with a forklift, right? Uh, no, actually, Screw I that. um sell real estate. Uh huh. Out of a forklift or no? <laughs> yeah, right out of the trunk of my car. All right, you sell real estate, and you, you can't figure out the whole, you can't do the anal math. You know, I mean, I can know how you can do it. I just don't want to do it to the extent that it's going to damage. You know. All right. Well, why don't you loved one? (laughs) Why don't you? Why don't you leave her alone then? Right. You're a big man. It's gonna. She's a small gal. There you go. Could hurt her. So why bother? She's not into it. It's something you've been ruminating about. She's not asking for it. Is she? Can only. Sometimes they're asking for it without saying anything. I can always tell. No, it's it's more along the (laughs) line. It's a more of a look. uh, yeah, we'll try, but if not, then I don't want to. We'll try, but if not, I don't want to. I'm trying to translate that. Like, if you start to do it and it's like if it's uncomfortable, then she doesn't want to. That's right, and that's when you stop, and that's the end of that. All right. Oh, that's fine. All right. All right. Look, I I don't know. Uh, I don't oh. know. I don't know how it works in Australia or England, but uh, the uh, anal obsession we have in this country, <laughs> I, I don't get it. I don't understand. Call me old fashioned. It's not. It's uh, prison uh, sex. Yeah, it's <laughs> aggressive. It's a real aggressive move. Is it? Yeah, is that what it is? Misogyny. But don't you think there's an aspect of uh, no pun intended? I, there's yeah, <laughs> every, every, everything's a double entendre. Yeah, right. It really is. I there's an element. Yes. Okay. <laughs> of uh, I just want to I want to say I tried it. Right. I want to check you it You always say that, but the guys don't really tell us that. They, 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 for some reason, can't really even tell us what is motivating them. Is really. there all? Is there also sort of an element of it, it's out there? Uh, I, uh, most twenty-four-year-old guys who have a girlfriend, though, look at it more as a sort of is, cadaver for them to right, experiment. My on. sense is they kind of want to hurt a woman with their penis. Ooh. they're kind of looking to. To It'd be nice. Yeah. yeah. I like to just say I did that once. Right. I'd have so, to get a running start. I think but that I think is. I it's like checking, it. ticking off boxes, isn't it? Right. It's like you want to, everybody wants to appear like they're really sexually open and free and they've tried, no one wants to appear repressed like they haven't done it. So. Nobody wants to be lying on their deathbed and say, I never cornholed abroad. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Or spent too many hours at the office. Those right. are the two things that you right. say. <laughs>
<laughs> Drew, I had to do motivational posters. You really should. <laughs> Eagle. Eagle soaring over the Alaskan tundra. And it says, uh, nobody wants to be lying in, on their deathbed. Yeah. And by the way, is that a different bed than the one you normally sleep on? Or is any one you're going to die on? As a doctor. It's usually different. But you don't have it labeled deathbed at the hospital, do you? <laughs> That's you, a bummer. Will you well, move them you, onto you know, the deathbed? Well, you'll you show mean, it to the patient and bring it in. Just put it, them on the deathbed. You put them on the deathbed. Yeah. All right, they know because there's a body being rolled <laughs> off of it as they You're go. not even giving me a fighting chance. I'm on the deathbed. Sorry, you're on the deathbed. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> Uh, where's a trailer hitch on so we can drive it to your grave? Uh -huh. uh, but, uh, on, yeah, so it's a picture of an eagle. Yeah. And it's, it's oh, my, over the Canadian Rockies. Ooh, nice. Over the Canadian Rockies. Tetons. And it says, uh, nobody, <laughs> nobody wants to be on their deathbed and say they didn't cornhole abroad. Yeah. 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 Powerful. Uh, very moving. Powerful words. Yeah. Motivation. Maybe John Denver's picture next to it. Yeah. I like Australia, those. it's, it, you know, the rule, one finger at a time. Oh, right. It's the rule. Yeah, just go smart. Slow, start small. One finger at a time. I mean, you can always right. find yeah, out yeah. if someone's into it. Or yeah, not. if she's not into it, I wouldn't. Uh, if, she's, if she can't it, have could only an index her. finger, then yeah, no, it could only hurt. Yeah, there we go. Keep going. All right, move on. All right, so one finger at a time. And if <laughs> and if you run out of hands, by the way, though, maybe maybe she's not a keeper. You know, maybe you don't marry her. <laughs> so if you can start getting your feet involved, you know what I'm saying, Drew? <laughs> start rolling into the toes. You know, maybe you got a problem, Lindsay. Maybe yeah. she should have went C-section, huh? Mm. Lindsay, you're 16. Yes, I am. What's up? Um, okay, well, my parents are recently divorced, and my mom has a new boyfriend, and he spends the night sometimes, and uh, my mm. bedroom is right below theirs, and I can hear them. Yeah. Oof. A lot. Oh. 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 Yeah. Um. <laughs> so I'm wondering, uh. like, how to approach this issue. Uh, are, there, are there other siblings in the house? Yeah, my brother. How old is he? He's 12. Oh, I think he's around this time. Where is he? His bedroom's a little further away on yeah. the bottom floor, but... You know what you should do? Like, get take a broom into your room, and when they start smack that up, the they ceiling. just smack the ceiling. They will freak out, I suspect, when they realize that you can hear it. Oh, God. And then your mom will have to like, talk no. to you. No, 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 but that's that's weird. That's or weird. He, she could paint her face it's up. Weird. The, listen, it's weird of the parents to put this poor girl in this position yeah, in the first place. Oh, what do they want? Go ahead, Lee. Sorry. I was. She could stand at the end of the bed with kind of that Shining-esque pale... Day yeah. face makeup and just stare at them until they see her. Well, and that I don't would, right. it, 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 freak them out. Then they know that I know, and it's yeah. creepy anyway. And I yeah, they oh. can't. They can't know you know. That's uh, well, what that's weird. Do? I'll tell you. I'll tell you what you're gonna do. First off, you gotta get you gotta get those little foam ear plugs. You gotta plug your ears up. Yeah. You gotta get some kind of little noise maker, like a little fan or a little white noise thing. You know, makes the sound of the ocean. That's it. I worry about the mom that's in, that's getting this far out there that her. She got a new bow, you know. It's been uh, been a little dry spell. This guy's excited. They don't live in a castle, you know. What are they gonna do? Hump in the kitchen? You see what yeah. I'm saying, yeah. Lindsay? Yeah. Uh, is it a small house? Not really. No. Oh, really? Can he take? Is there other? But they don't have other bedrooms or anything, right? No. I'm mm. But but you're not willing not to like put her on notice in any way that you know. You want to hide that you well, know. How, how about you, I, I you do it jokingly? I'm le I'm like less worried about her knowing than I am about him knowing, because he's new and he, I'm still kind of uh, weird about him and I don't know. In what way weird? Well, just he's kind of slimy and well, don't, don't oh. talk to him. Don't even deal with him. It's you, really between you and your mom. Well, yeah, really. It, it, this is it, this isn't a stepdad. This is a boyfriend. Yeah, a new one. Um and and. She's had other boyfriends that you disapproved no, of? No, this is the first one. And do you, where's dad? He's around. He's around, but uh, how recently did he leave? No, well, he didn't, like, leave per se. Like, I don't know, they got divorced, and it was kind of, it was a pretty mature thing. It was just, like, and I go to his house half the time, but mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. I met my uh, mom's and I had, so, yeah. Maybe you ought to move in your, back to your dad's. What? Uh, look, I, here's the way you do it. You do it jokingly. You say to mom, wow, sounds like somebody had a good time uh, last night upstairs. And hopefully that's enough just to give her a little, little, little jab, a little shame, and she reels it in. If not, then you start getting into the uh, earplugs and you start getting into the uh, noisemaker. Nothing wrong with that. Let me tell you something. Hold on. Lee's got something to say, well, too. Well, I was just going to say that I had experience with this, not so much with the hearing uh, sounds, but with uh, parents separating, new new boyfriend comes in, and, and I had to share the house. And it's, it's not good. You, 
you have to tell she has to tell mm. her, her mother about this because it's it's just you, you, she has to live there in this house if you're yeah, uncomfortable it, in your own house she, at yeah. that age, she needs some self respect to be yeah. Able, yeah. yeah and no, no one, it, she'll, she'll she won't want to come home she'll be uncomfortable yes, in her own absolutely. house absolutely yeah. she get depressed and be bad Lee, uh, Lee, bad. by the way, is a, a product of a dysfunctional family, as uh, as am I. Oh, yeah. Drew, you don't oh, know you. what it's like. Hey, we put it, the funk in dysfunctional. Are, are you too, Carrie? <laughs> oh, Paris? man. Hey, name me one that isn't. Uh, Dr. Drew over here. Right. Paris, oh, I could say something. They still um, love each other. Um, yeah. Um, I went through the same problem. And I was like 10 or 11. My parents were at it, and I just walked in the bedroom and yeah. stood at the foot of the bed, and, and they stared. immediately... Like the girl from The Shining. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they immediately got up. And my dad just like got on top, off of my mom and said, oh, what's the matter, honey? And I said, I can't sleep. Wow. And, uh, and what they say? They talk about. They anything? didn't say anything. They just kind of. My mom kind of like hid under the covers, oh. and <laughs> right. my dad just. They never talked about it again. And well, and that stopped them. Um, kind of for a little while, but then it went back on. So oh. I started uh, sleeping with the Walkman. And oh, really? But you, were, you were ten at the time. Yeah. Did this, did this screw you up? You well, think? I think I am. <laughs> no, but did that, that experience it didn't. Oh yeah, it you? totally did. I was so fearful of sex, yeah. and I just didn't. You know, it just traumatized me. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, you know, began listening to sports talk radio and uh, fell asleep with the Walkman every night. Mm. And hence, so I have bad hearing. <laughs> <laughs> why is it? Why is it that it's so hard to th yeah, even think about your parents having? S is there a psychological reason for this? Where it's just like you and, shiver. What? And Drew, what is that? I mean, is is human beings evolution and all that? People living in confined areas, huts, caves. You know, large <laughs> families. You know, why? Why, why? How would that serve us to be grossed out by our parents' uh, you know, sexuality? Well, it, serves, it, it prevents, well, a number of things. It, it prevents the uh, consanguinity of genes. You know, the, the who? The, the same genes being shared by the same oh, people. Oh, you mean like dad, like, oh, I got a little something left for you, Junior. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> that this, guy? this is even worse than brother and sister sharing genes. We, like son and mom sharing genes, genetic Ooh, material. Yeah. You end up with some bad stuff. Bad mixing. Ding, 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 ding. Right. Psychologically, it's just something. You know, I, I think it's more than psychological. I, th I think it, there's a psychological process to it, but I think it is something evolutionarily it's ser inbuilt, serving right, us from right. an evolutionary perspective. Well, it's it's an interesting thing, which is uh, you, you, you talk to Drew and whatever bizarre sort of thing that we think is a idiosyncrasy or or just sort of societal moray or something like that. You start breaking it down. You start realizing there's a reason for it. There's I mean, sort biological of biologically right, somewhere right, in there. Right. Right, and and so you would say this is it. Yeah, to, to prevent the genetic. Because millions of years ago, Dad still had a boner left and was going to use it on the kid, yeah, or, or the son on the mom, or the son on the mom. That's right. And that's theoretically it's, uh, it's something that's in us needed that needed to be motivation against that very strong sort of disgust and things. So we're kept freaked us out by it. it. Yeah. So when people break it and do, obviously it does happen, that's mm -hmm. just them fighting against it. And also, them. and rem imagine what it happens to family systems. I mean, you know what happens in romantic or sexual relationships already. I mean, the kind of chaos that erupts. Imagine if that's going on within a family. And right. It's like they, this, yeah. The family wouldn't survive. The individuals wouldn't survive. You know, they can't. Mm. Right. In, in nature, they never would get by. She's my sister. She's my, my daughter. She's my True, you don't know. You don't know She's the uh, weirdness of when the uh, new dad or stepmom, or not even the new dad. It takes takes ten of them before you get to the stepmom. Oh, you yeah. got the weirdo boyfriend guy who's uh, hanging around. Right. Weirdo, <laughs> weirdo chick du jour from the office who's twenty years younger is hanging around. Be so weird for the kids. <laughs> it's just weird. Yeah. Oh, the guy's humping your mom. <laughs> this is your uncle. <laughs> Yeah, how about that choice? <laughs> yeah, that's Explain. weird. Oh, we're going yeah. camping. My mom is a hippie, too. She was like, uh, we're we going camping with Uncle Zorback. He's got a <laughs> micro bus. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? We're going to eat some peyote in the desert and freak out. <laughs> Fantabulous. That's what. Uh, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm scheduling a therapy for 20 years. Tell is that what that puts you down? Twice a week? <laughs> Twice a week. <laughs> Tell them what happened. That Tell them what happened. Carbon monoxide poisoning. <laughs> I could have been some. I could have been a genius. I really believe I could have been a genius had it not been for the carbon monoxide poisoning. You can see just the occasional bursts of what could have been. Yeah, you, you yeah. see little flash, little, just a flash. little yeah. flash every once in a while. Right. The back of the bus was open. He was sleeping back there, and the exhaust yeah. was coming right in on him. So this yeah. was a true story yeah. about Zorback. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh Zorback. Wow. Yeah, you can't make up Zorback. Yeah, those, those <laughs> if I was a genius and hadn't been poisoned, 
by make is, is like exhaust. Yeah. I could have made that up. But instead, I have almost no creativity because of the carbon monoxide poisoning. But let me tell you, uh, I'll tell you an important thing I learned about uh, carbon monoxide. Uh, is, as, far as, as far as, you know, people use it to commit suicide, perfect way to go. Because you, you, get, you get tired. Mm-hmm. I, w- I was sleeping in the back of this bus, this hippie bus, with like I had a screen door for like a back, you know, the right. back window was like a sliding screen. Ugh. And it was open, which you don't realize. If you ever drive around a car and you open the hatch, you just breathe the exhaust right. of the car. It creates a vacuum or something. And especially old cars. Right. Which is crazy, too. Like, you drive behind a Honda now, you forget what it was like back in the day. You drive behind a car, you yeah. that guy's running a little rich. He ought to rejet that carburetor. I mean, you can <laughs> smell what kind of fuel the guy's totally. burning and stuff. So, you know, you get tired, and then you go, oh, I'm just going to fall asleep. And 200 miles later, you're, 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 you're getting, yeah. yeah. Brain cells I, you you wake, up, wake up dead. Oh, no, listen. If it weren't for that one trip uh, with Zorback, I would be in some lab right now. And I'd have a stick. I'd be pointing at things. <laughs> Things, and I'd, I'd I'd be asking a guy to change the next slide, and there'd be I'd be surrounded by like uh, 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 Indians and Asians, and they would all want to know what I thought next about something, and I'd be talking. It'd be it'd be huge. Instead, it's uh, fourteen year olds who got uh, a boil on their coos. That's <laughs> that's what it's turned into, and I blame Zorbeck. It is Zorbeck's fault. Plus, right. your mom for bringing Zorbeck around. Oh, don't worry. She's paying. Oh, no kidding. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's take a little break. Saw, everyone, coming out uh, Friday. Only R-rated movie out this entire week. It's Halloween weekend. Again, and you want that margarita R with a box film. of wine? What's that, Drew? And one R horror film. The only That's right. R horror film. The only R yeah. horror film. What did I say? He said a one R horror film. I don't know. Th- a one R. The only R Horror film. Is that what you said? Yeah, I think I said it's that. It's the Calvin yeah, Monopoly. Wow. <laughs> Come on, Drew. Losing What's it. your excuse, by the way? Your parents stay together. You didn't get monoxide poisoning. Something What'd you do? Tonight? Wow. All right, buddy. <laughs> Let's take a little break. We'll be right back. Hey, yo. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Carrie Ellis here tonight, along with uh, Lee one L. And these guys are both uh, involved, starring in, and uh, Lee wrote the uh, new movie Saw. We just had uh, a screening out here, and we had some uh, very excited young fans just uh, make their way into the studio. Although, I am guess these guys were, seem more frightening than the movie could ever be. <laughs> Those are K-Rock. Um, oh, really? Guys, yeah. All right. Employees. All right. I'm going to take the uh, escape pod out. <laughs> in case they're out there. Uh, they came in. They were excited. They saw the movie tonight. What did they say, Drew? I was uh, yes, making loved, number one. People were out of their seats the last ten minutes of the film. Yeah, really? Screen. And they were, people were yelling at the screen so yeah. much. That... White, white people. <laughs> wow. Oh, Maybe. Okay, well, the point is, is er- everyone was out of their everyone seat. Everyone was out of their seat yelling, yelling at the screen. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Asian. That's Asian. right. Where's the board? I'll tell Everybody. you when I realized this movie was officially happening. It was only a few weeks ago when they played us the television trailer, and the voice of God was on there. That guy. Oh, it the- was like, critics are calling so. The scariest film of the year. Yeah, and that, that guy, guy, the voice of God, he's like a walking money factory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every yeah. every trailer, every what's the guy's name? Do I don't know, but he does everything. He's like, but he's just that land voice. Yeah, for die in the world. But right. when he, he comes on, and yeah. critics are calling Saw the scariest film of the year. Right, it's awesome. Yeah, it's uh, you know you've arrived. It's really like if you're a fighter and uh, Michael Buffer says, "Let's get ready to rumble." Mm-hmm. It, right. it means you've you've yeah, arrived. Yeah. That's yeah. that's yeah. that you've arrived. <laughs> Or at least by someone's ear of. Wow. Wow. It's like, wow. It's like Anderson. Right at rock. Hey, Anderson, do you have my, uh, what's my trailer? What? Remember the guys from Arrested Development uh, came in here? Oh, yes. And uh, one of the guys did a, did a lot of voiceover stuff for like Dodge and uh, did a lot of TV voiceover work. And we did the uh, In Order. Hatch. Uh, hack. Hack. In Order for Hack. Do you have that, Anderson? In Order to Reach These Kids. Hack will have to become a rapist. A rapist. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my That's idea. Maybe this could be another movie here. Here's my movie idea. It's a guy. It's it's every TV trailer is 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 uh, this week on Hack. In order to catch a counterfeiter, Hack is going to have to become. A rapist. See, everything ends with rape. You think he's going to say counterfeiter, but it turns out he loves rape so much. That's, and it, and it's every, up, every week. And this week, in order to catch him, international jewel thief, 
hack is going to have to be, and then the beat, <laughs> right? Everything's that's it's messed up. It'll never right. get better. It's, 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 it's wrong. I bet it's these guys would appreciate your theory on the rape. Well, it's not a theory. Well, your description of rape. Well, I mean, it's a fact. It's an act. Yeah, it's, it's a, not a violent. It's not a sexual. Right? It's not a sexual act. You've heard that, right? It's, it's not rape a, is a violent act against women. It's it's violent. Yeah. It's violent. Yeah, it's not, not sexual. It's not a Nothing sexual, act. sexual it's a, it's a, about it. It's no. a violent yeah. act. Yeah. But you know, you come. <laughs> but it's it's no it's no Nothing different. Sex. No, no. no different than if I just club drew over the head and came. But <laughs> no no different than if I you know went into a liquor store and just robbed it and violently uh, but you know came and then took <laughs> took the money. It is no different. I understand, Drew. Same thing. It's an act it's of a, violence. It, it, ejaculate. You, you, you ejaculate. Yeah, you come. But it's violent. That's well, the okay. point. That's my point. All right, Drew, you, Are you yeah. done offending? <laughs> Can we move forward? It's not a It's Not, not a violent. But, but, but you, a, do. You, yeah, you do. You do have it. You do. It's a violent yeah. act that involves cum. That's right. That's yeah. right. Not, not sexual. Nothing, not, not sexual. Nothing, not sexual. Sexual. nothing sexual about how dare I don't know you. Know when, when did it, by the way, I, I don't know when it, that became popular, about 10 years ago that decree had to go down. Like, I think it is sexual for the guys who are actually having the of orgasm. Of course it is. It doesn't yeah. make it right, but it's, yeah, it's sex. It's not consensual sex. It's not loving sex. It's, it's a crime. But why do we have to do that? Like pretend it's something that it isn't. Yeah, it, it's it's incredibly sexual. I'm yeah. guessing for the guy who's doing it yes. because he can't stop. Listen, you know? when, when it's like saying pedophilia is not sexual, zoophilia is not. For people that have distortions of their sexuality, that is sexuality to them. What's right. zoophilia? What do you call it now? Animals. When oh. someone's turned on by killing, just by killing, not by that's murder. again that's a, that is a sexual perversion. And that's okay. the same kind of stuff. Yes, it's a violent act, but it's, it's just got a sexual thing for him. It's like Jeffrey people. Dahmer. He enjoyed drilling holes in people's heads and pouring the boiling water in, but he was sexually turned on by it. Okay. Uh, nice. we got to go to phones. I'm getting a little weird. This guy wrote that goddamn film. <laughs> I know. No, wrote it. Lived it. Oh. <laughs> Loved Docu it. It's a documentary. <laughs> No, no calling so. <laughs> the scariest film of the year. Uh, where's that pod you were talking a about? Rapist. Mike? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mike. Yeah. You're 22? Yes, I am. What's up? Well, I had a couple things. I just wanted to say hey to, to Carrie. Um, I'm an ex-Civil War reenactor, and I thought that's got to be one of the best movies, uh, Glory, that depicts a Civil War that I've ever seen. Oh, thank you, man. You're gay. What, he's what kind of actor? He was a fa he was a s ex Civil War reenactor right. re until he God. took a pretend musket to the sternum. <laughs> You're gay. <laughs> had to pull out. Where did you do this? <laughs> what? And by the way, you hang up your 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 fake at 22. Your, your fake musket and 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 your in your knee high boots at 22. This, by the way, this stuff somebody's supposed to get into. You when know you're what? Like he, was, he was a drummer boy. I, I moved out of the. I moved away from where I used to do it. So really, which regiment were you? Were you part of a certain regiment or something? Uh, yeah, I was. I started off in the 79th New York, uh, the Scottish Highlanders. Uh, right. Then I switched to cavalry. Uh, uh -huh. The Second Massachusetts, which is also the first uh, California regiment, the Cal 100, out of San Francisco. Right. Wow. And then uh, the Second South Carolina Sharpshooters, and ended with the First Marine uh, Corps Presidential Detail. Wow. So you're gay. So you played both uh, blue and gray. I had to. I'm from the South. Turn right. So I, had, I had to do it a little bit. So wow. did you get really involved in it where you, like, traveled and uh, pitched tent? Like, because I met a lot of these guys and scary you know, pitch tents and, and feed great, themselves great around a campfire and the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. So you show you pictures of their wives that were done in, like, you know, old yeah. Tintacrome pictures and stuff. You know, they get locks and big things of hair of their wives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brought this no, with I, me. I didn't do that. I did used to, uh, you know, I pitched my A-frame and everything, but I never went back east. Uh, I've eaten hardtack, but I much re uh, prefer a steak. Right. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not into the hardcore stuff. Right, right. Isn't it uh, freaky though? Like when your sergeant is is like dressing you down and saying that uh, we got to we got to make uh, Bunker Hill by nightfall, and you're like, uh, r r Ron, we're, uh, we're going to work on Monday, though, aren't we? And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about, Private. And you're like. Uh, so people don't weird. realize how dangerous it is. It's like, <laughs> no, Chad, I'm General Lee. Right. <laughs> you fights break out like anything. Right. <laughs> that's actually kind of another reason why I kind of got out of it. It gets way too political and people right. are just... I shot you. You should be dead, man. I shot you three times already. <laughs> yeah. Is there much inter-reenactment people dating going on? Just trying oh, to bring it around to, the, to yeah. the sex thing? Is there much, you know, do, is there a lot of love happening within these groups? Is it a good in, social... In the a tenth? Yeah. 
It's kind of carny atmosphere. I, I never got into uh, it, but yes, very much so. Oh, I mean, I, 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 I bet the chicks uh, r rival rival those at the Renaissance Fair <laughs> in, terms, in the pig factor. Is there any other I mean, country? It's got to be brutal. Where, where, really? they, where people do that? Oh, really? sure, they do it in Rena England. In Australia, they, they have the medieval it, thing. And in England, they so do the Civil happening. War thing. The, the English Civil War, these guys come out, muskets, the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's nice to know, actually. I'm sure they do it every France, Germany. I'm sure they all do it, you know? Well, I don't know about France. Yeah, French. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <they're right. laughs> yeah, this... <laughs> the French are doing it daily, just yeah. living. Yeah, lives. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Jean Claude, you didn't you didn't lay the arm down correctly. We we put it down and then we drop it. And it hands up. There you go, perfectly <laughs> single file, perfect. All right. If you were going to reenact a period, maybe Adam, which one would you choose? If you had to be a part well, of for something, for me, for me, I go World War Two. I right. I got the I got the street sweeper. I got the Tommy gun. That's Rat Patrol all the way. I got right. the I got the helmet with the net in it. Not right. sure why, but the <laughs> net's in there, and I'm f firing rounds off top, into the right air. Top, right. yeah. yeah, we're dug in in the beach. You know, I'm on the talkie with the huge thing. Right. I'm calling air support. <laughs> talkie weighs right. like forty pounds. <laughs> <laughs> right. 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 L.A. Police call it. There's a man on Venice Beach dug in, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> firing right. rounds. We have a suspect. A two eleven in progress. I'm He's sorry. got a mortar that's made of a uh, plastic PVC piping. It's not going without a fight. He's just dropped a beanbag. I know it is waiting for something to happen. <laughs> so, anyway, what's your question, man? Oh, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah, World, yeah World War II, yeah. Oh, man. P-51 Mustang flying yeah. overhead. Yeah. Hmm? So what they do? They do World War II reenacting in Irvine. Got to get out there. They'll do anything in Irvine. All right, so... Uh, men will get into anything anywhere. Any, any, I went and saw the Pixies in Irvine last... Any, uh, any yeah. excuse to get out of the house. So, Mike. Yeah. So, the question is, uh, what... Okay, my girlfriend's uh, ex-boyfriend, he's actually British, so Carrie might know about this, but I hope not. He gets off popping, like, beach balls. Right? Popping like, what? Never, like, kick balls and stuff. And I wanted to know what causes such a weird, effed up fetish. What do you mean? He does that during sex? N no, he, he doesn't even have to have sex to do that. He's, uh, he, he, like, gets off on watching people pop a ball. You mean he, 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 he like, ejaculates? When that happens, I, I didn't go as far to ask that much. What's he popping? He what's he popping the bowl with? Uh, I just I'm watches his hands. All right. well, he needs help. Clearly, the guy's yeah, got it's some, hard to, some it's, issues. It, it's there. hard to really. No one knows for sh specifically or explicitly what causes fetishes. Yeah, you know, the, they, we, they still argue about why people get preoccupied with feet and they get preoccupied with <laughs> S and M type fetishes. But the fact is. Something happened when he was growing up that uh, was overwhelming and very uh, sort of arousing to him, and it, or maybe terrifying to him, and it gets converted into something a source of arousal in adulthood. Popping beach balls, <clears throat> yeah, though. really? Why? What's it the weirdest be, one you've heard of? Yeah, <clears throat> there you go. I, I mean, I can't think of any. We've heard some weird ones. Uh, they're all pretty standard. That beach ball that's ones up there, there isn't it? Well, I, there's really, the, there's the, the, uh, I like it when a beach ball is popped. <laughs> I, I think I that's think, when I really get turned on. I like the if fact there isn't a beach ball is involved. He's I'm afraid I can't be involved myself. I think you'll find. That, <laughs> I like that, the fact that he figures about eighty percent of people from England are involved with I this know, fetish. Right. Eighty to Kerry ninety. Know, no, I, know. I've never heard that. Before. But you don't come from a long line of beach ball poppers. Yeah, right. Exactly. There's a whole contingent of beach ball poppers where I come from. His crest is a guy sitting on a. It actually pumps. Puncturing one with an erect <laughs> penis. That's right. his family crest. It started when we went to Butlins <laughs> on a nice, nice, lovely summer afternoon in the freezing cold water off Cornwall <laughs> when a beach ball headed my way and it burst overhead. And at the same time, I find myself absolutely ejaculating. <laughs> it was extraordinary. <laughs> and now, I have, to, I have to have a beach ball in the room every time. I'll tell you, this is, he is the Benny Hill of... True. Well, no, wait a minute. He's, <laughs> of Benny Hill. Both oh, anyway. Anyway. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, but no, it turns well, out you're from the same place. <laughs> I think one day we're going to find that there are sort of characteristic things that can happen during development. Because there are only so many fetishes, and there's, so, and there's some something happens, some sort of source of terror, and it becomes a visual focus for males. It pretty much only happen to males. Yeah, you know, these weird fetishes. Yeah, women and, don't have that. Yeah, and it just it converts into something as as they mature. It's very hard to understand. I I wonder. It makes me think. I wonder if if 
you know, mom was pregnant or something weird, some yeah. kind of weird, you know, some weird. image that image got I converted. I hear you saying the word weird a lot. Yeah, well, it, it is weird, <laughs> but so you got converted into some sort of yeah, sexual thing about fantasy. balls, you know, who knows? It's, yeah. All yeah. right. I just, I'm, I'm just thinking about the, uh, the, the stark contrast between the Civil War play and then coming right. back to the harsh reality yeah. of it. Now, uh, is this guy a friend of yours? He was your, your girlfriend's ex, ex-boyfriend? Boyfriend? This is, yeah, this is my current girlfriend's ex-boyfriend. Is he an okay guy otherwise? Uh, he... I think he's pretty effed up. He, he but... works for a German porn company. So well, there you go. Okay. Well, there you go. For you sometimes. Mike, be, be honest. Be honest. When, and we've got to take a break, but do you ever use the powder horn on the old lady? You know what I'm saying? No, that's okay. one of the before the Civil War. Okay. Never had to use one of those. I had rolled yeah. cartridges. No, I meant on, on the, you know what I'm saying? I mean, using the horn. They didn't use the horn. They used the uh, rolled cartridge. Right. Well, there you go. Between the gym and porn and the beach balls and the yeah, Civil War guy, reenactment, you got a strange circle of friends. Yeah, yeah. really. So this guy's hanging out still with your uh, with your girlfriend? Uh, no, he's gone. He's, he's gone. hung up. We're taking a break. We're hanging up. Soon. By the way, uh, you know, know how long it would take me to uh, load a musket with a charging uh, regiment coming oh, at me? Right. Hour 20, hour 30 minutes. Just that's, fiddling. That's when you, falling that's off. That's when you get the dressing down from the sergeant. Yeah. <laughs> this is what I love about the right to bear arms, this constitution. When that was written, th they were firing these muskets that I, I couldn't hit you from here. Same yeah. thing as the automatic banana clip. Yeah. Oh, same yeah. Thing. Same yeah. thing. 70 okay. round banana clips right. with the cop killer uh, yeah. hollow points in there. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what the founding same fathers same. said. Yeah, that's, that's what they had in mind. Arm, when armor they piercing bullets. Right. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, no. No, that's what they wanted. All right, we'll uh, take ourselves a uh, little break. We'll be right back after this. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Jimmy Eat World in here tomorrow night. Carrie Elwes in here tonight. And uh, Lee Wanell also. That guy got that right, right? Sure. Wanell. No, it's not one o. One o. One o. Yeah. Uh, the name of the movie is Saw, and uh, we had some people that were so excited about seeing this movie. They came in here and had to uh, give props to uh, Carrie and Lee. By the way, had signed little doll versions. Excited. Of it. Just got done seeing a screening, a special K Rock screening of it, and uh, people yelling, screaming. Vomiting in the aisles, <laughs> making, <laughs> screaming for their money back, Ma making in the aisles, making. <laughs> Your soul comes out like soft swirl when you see this movie. Absolutely, and rated mm. R, everybody. Only one. Did I say it right this yeah, time? You did. Only that, one. That's Only right. horror film this this, weekend. this Halloween weekend, and I do mean it. And I made my margarita uh, analogy earlier, but I I do feel like it's like if if you're gonna it, like it's like seeing a porn movie that's rated you know R and C seventeen or something. It's you, not, ever, you ever watched this soft porn mm, on the hotel? Uh, let me think. Uh, yes, <laughs> they, uh, thousands and thousands of hours of you it. Have, but, I, I thought that would insult your sensibilities. Well, first off, it's all I break the TV. There's a time it? when it's all I had. Oh yeah. So what are you gonna mm -hmm. do? Is, is a prisoner insulted that you give him bread yeah, crust no, and tap water? I'm sorry. I, don't, <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, do? I don't mean to bring that period of your life up. I'm hole. sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, right. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course I've moved on. Of course. Of course. Man, if I moved on. <laughs> it's, it's weird Adam, Adam has, has, a, has a bunker of porn. Yeah, but. <laughs> really? Oh, it's carefully guarded. He has to put his face into this scanning device. To let in. <laughs> well, I've had problems. <laughs> so I'm going to try and break in there doing that Tom Cruise Mission Impossible thing where I lower oh, myself oh, down. And many times, many times. He's, he's got a laser device. <laughs> yeah, it's that. awesome. And by the way, let me. Oh, oh, here's here's another one of those movie conventions that I think uh, never actually happens. You know, I'm obsessed with these things where the where the guys uh, like. Uh, there's a horrible storm at sea, and then he oh, yeah. wakes up the next morning on the beach, passed out. <sighs> or washing what up. What happened? I washed up. <laughs> right, right. I, must have, I must fall asleep 20 nautical miles out, 30, 30 uh, knots, uh, 80 knot winds, below and water, swells, water. Yeah, right. hypothermia, and I just wake up on the beach. Uh, okay, that's one thing that never happens. Uh, but the other thing, uh, you know when they start crawling through ducting? Yeah, this happened right. in Mission Impossible. Yeah, right. also, yeah. First off, 
I can't Im- imagine uh, air ducting is that well lit yeah, from right. the inside. I imagine it to be right. a dark place. Yeah, I, sure. I couldn't mm-hmm. see financially, you know, like when you're building a commercial building. All right, we need uh, lighting for inside the ducting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Phil, are you high? Let's take the rest of the week off. No, we don't need and lighting it, inside right. the ducting. It's got to be big enough to handle two people. It's got to be right. big enough. And a 300-pound black man right. is going to be able to lower <laughs> right. a 200-pound man with a cable down the thing. Yeah. But I, I've built... Many, many, many places. The ducting is held on by thin strap yeah, that's yeah. like fired into the cement yeah. slab that's above it on the floor. Couldn't hold anything. Yeah. Barely holds its own weight up. Yeah. It's like it's like a, a mobile hanging yeah. over a crib. Well, the, the great thing about Mission Impossible was they get in there and it's like Fort Knox. It's guarded. Lasers. You got to get through finger scans, eye scans, and then they get into the duct and there's a rat in there. That's what upset them. Oh, the, right. the rat running loose oh, right. in the right. duct. <laughs> yeah, well lit, well <laughs> spacious duct. And by the way, it, it just becomes a a, a way a, a, almost a form of transportation, this duck. Like, right. you just, well, you want to get to that? You want to take the hallway or want to use the or duck? Or you just the laundry <laughs> chute. Just, yeah, shoot. Yeah, we'll right. just kick the thing out, yeah. hop in the thing. I, I, there's, I, I would say... It has been utilized in 150 movies, yeah. but uh, oh, once in a while, a, a prisoner uh, wiggles through something, but that's about it. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Yes. And it's got to be filthy, by the way. Oh, Ever, yeah, totally. Look at your air conditioner. It's got all that soot and all that yeah. uh, crap stuck in. It's always squeaky clean. Yeah, it's no, like, totally. you don't even put a little dust yeah, in the there? the CIA have squeaky clean air ducts. That's right. It's polished, it's polished chrome. Yeah, it's okay. well yeah. lit. Even the rat doesn't leave any mess behind it. <laughs> no, it's no rat crap. <laughs> Come on. All right. All right, I'm glad. That's right. not in Saw, is Write it? Write the script no. with the first realistic duct yeah, so orientated it could be a duck scene where the guy looks in it, he can't see, he can't Sneezes. see anything. He climbs, he starts to climb up into it, and the whole thing collapses, yeah, and he's go. caught and tortured. There you go. All right. The Chicago Sun Times is calling it the greatest <laughs> duck scene ever produced in film. Critics are calling duck wars. Run, don't walk. If you're a fan of ducting or any HVAC work at all, <laughs> any forced air heating. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is the HEPA filter of ductwork movies. Oh my God! Look what time it is, Drew. No, you're enjoying yourself so much, and we got to take a break. I'm really enjoying. My Jeff head. wanted to talk about anal sex, though. Here, uh, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, the uh, uh, anal ship sex is sailed. We're out of time. The USS Bunghole is uh, sailed. <laughs> we we got we're, we're out of time. I'm so, I'm sorry, sweetness. We just got to take a break. That's here, all. Let's do that. All right, we'll be right back. Well, that's the show, everybody. Uh, I want to thank uh, Carrie and Lee for coming in here tonight and uh, being delights. Thank you for having thanks us. Thanks for having us. Man. Our pleasure. Really, thanks, guys. Our pleasure. Did we change some lives? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Go uh, see Saw coming up uh, this Friday, everyone. R-rated. Big, ho- big uh, Halloween weekend. Forget that grudge. Knock it right off its uh, high <laughs> high horse and uh, replace it with saw. All right. Uh, God bless the two of you. Uh, Thanks, come back uh, anytime, any projects, oh. any movies. We'd love to have you. Thanks. Jimmy Eat World tomorrow night. Until next time, this is Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Earning, looting, the streets of Boston overrun by rioters. <laughs> Once again, the fruit of peace has become the jam of war. <laughs> I'm Azim Akram, BBC News, as Boston burns. This has been Love Line. Love Line. The, 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 the opinions expressed in this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, the sponsors, or the station. The producer for Love Line is Annie Gold. Love Line is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.